The B side in boxing. B side shit. B side. B side. And the B side. You got a B side. The B side. B side. B side. B side. That B side thing. This is the B sides boxing podcast. All right, we'll see how much of that makes the final cut. It'll probably end up on on the Patreon segment. It's where this yes. stuff goes. So, yeah, if you want to know what we were just talking about, that's where you go get it. LBX Media. Yay! Just as we are everywhere. Okay, boxing B-sides. Holy shit, we're back. Post Canelo. Uh, we will be sharing our thoughts on that later. So, stand by. Uh, quickly, to begin. On September 6th, this one, Drip, I expect you didn't see this, but 1FC168 was really no, good. I did not see that. <laughs> yeah, um... It was really good. A lot of great fights on it. A lot of great knockouts on it. Um, even like the MMA ones, not a whole lot of grappling. Uh, the main event, uh, Jonathan Haggerty versus uh, Superlek, the Thai Muay Thai superstar. Well, one, one of the two. It was fucking intense. First round knockout. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly how it all played out, but I will say it was Marquez versus Pacquiao esque in the oh. way that it looked. It was oh, really good. cool. Okay. Number four, I assume. Yes, number four. <laughs> it was man. I had to rewatch it a few times just to make sure I I saw what I thought I saw. Uh, but yeah, if you have, I might need to go find this one then. One one sixty eight is a uh, free on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure how it is in Asia. Um, but in the U.S., it's free on Prime. So nice. I say this to everybody: if you're not watching One FC, you're doing yourself a disservice. And if you're listening to Boxing B Sides, also a disservice. Quite a considerable disservice, especially if you consider yourself a hardcore fan, as it were. Me being Captain Casual, like what the fuck do I know about hardcore fans? But whatever. All right. Let's get into some fucking recaps here. On Wednesday, August 28th, I did... I did. Uh, Can we do a quick boxing news first? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, news? Okay. I, I was going to throw in about the double, double header in Tokyo That's in right. October. It's, just to get people excited. It's two, uh, two good headlines, right? Uh, yeah. October 13th is at Ariaka Arena. It's Takuma Inoue versus Seiya Tsutsumi is the headliner. Ooh, Already have my ticket pre-ordered. That one I'm very I'm much looking forward excited. to. I'm super excited. I really want Punch Burger to pull off the upset. I think it would be great. It would be a lot of fun. And Yeah. So Taraji's the co-main. Kenshiro Taraji. I don't really. If you don't remember. If you don't remember who he is. I picked him as my fight of the year runner up. Uh, for the mid-year picks, for every anyone listening, to go check out that fight. You'll get a good idea of what he's like. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that one. And then the next day in the same arena is Nakatani versus one of the Thai guys, Sor Chitpet Tana. Uh-huh. Anyways, still excited about that, even though I can't say his name. And the co-main there is Kosei Tanaka. But those tickets I can't find on sale yet. And I think it's really weird that the October 13 tickets went on sale last week and the October 14th tickets haven't gone on sale yet. Tasana Salapat. That's oh, uh, Nakatani's is... opponent. Okay, mm. this is his store name then, I Hetch guess. Hetch CP Freshmart. Hetch Sor Chitpatana. Yeah, CP yeah. Freshmart probably. Yeah. God damn it. Um, Thailand. Yeah, it's so confusing. Anyways, I'm super excited about the, the double header. It's a long weekend here, so I have both days off work and yeah. Gonna try to go to both if you can. I yeah, yeah. So like I said, I got my October thirteenth ticket ordered through the Punchburger fan site. <laughs> but I cannot find tickets for October fourteenth yet. Nakatani doesn't have them up for sale. So I don't know if those are gonna go through the Japanese version of Ticketmaster. 
maybe. Maybe yeah. Nakatani's a big enough name. Might be, but... actually, now that you mention it. Yeah, that's the only... Well, his last ones I bought through... It's Rakuten, I think, is the, the name of the site. Yeah, I know that. But the, uh, the 13th uh, ones, I <laughs> just did the the super sketchy, please take my money, Mr. Tsutsumi uh, <laughs> bank transfer. Oh, shit. Tensha Nasukawa is also fighting. Fucking cool. Jerwin Osilo, Bantam Weights. That's weird. Tension's usually at a 122, not 118. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I recognize the other guy, too. He's not Japanese, I don't think. Anthony Alasquaga and Jonathan Gonzalez. Uh, yeah. Is this the same Jonathan who f missed weight? I don't know. Uh, I'm not... Uh, There's yeah, too I'm... many Jonathan Gonzalez's. Um... If it is, he's got a new promoter, because his promoter dropped him after that last fight. Could be. Well, that's fun. I I'm super excited for this doubleheader thing. Yeah, it's gonna I am be too. great. It will be a good time. I think it's Saturday, Sunday in the states. Yes, probably late at night. Um, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, late at night or early Monday, early Sunday. Let me make. Yeah, sure. yeah, like two a.m. Yeah. Um. Wow. Actually, this is a very good segue there. On Wednesday, August twenty eighth, uh, No Limit Boxing in Australia at the ICC Sydney Theater. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other shit on there. Um, I, I mean, Michael Zarafa, the Tommy Brown, the bad blood was kind of funny. Zarafa, or Tommy Brown ended up like a torn bicep or something. I think that was a torn bicep and he quit on his stool rather than continue. So he's no Sergey, that's for sure. For shame. Mm. But Zarafa <clears throat> actually just got knocked out by Eris Landilara just before, so that's kind of fun. Headlining, though, was Nikita Zhu. He stops uh, Cohen Mazudier. Those, he's also 154, like his brother. It was fine. <laughs> I mean, it was uh, like a less polished Tim. It's really the only, the only way I can put it, but I stayed up I don't know how long for I don't know why to, do, to watch that. <laughs> uh, between this and then not too long after the um, Inoue card, my sleep cycle's fucked right now. There. Uh, moving up, Friday, August 30th. This was an overtime card. There's only two, three that I wanted to point out. Andreas Katsurakis gets the split decision over Robert Terry. That's 154 pound. And then Brandon Adams, UD over Francisco Verone. Those are the finalists, Adams versus Katsurakis. Those are the finalists for the uh, 154 tournament that they're doing. And last year's 122-pound winner, Elijah Pierce, beat uh, Jose San Martin. It was a UD. I guess the uh, overtime belt doesn't really count for anything. Sorry. Sorry, Elijah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, my heart breaks for you, buddy. But you'll get there. I always miss these overtime cards, and they do seem like they're fun. I just never get around to watching them. Not as good as uh, Pro Box, but it's all right. It's uh, if Friday night, well, in the U.S. is Friday night, and if you don't have anything else going on, then it's fine. Yeah, that's usually my problem. It's Saturday morning, and I have better things to do. <laughs> All right, moving along to Saturday, August 31st, match room at the Punch Bowl in California. Shavon Clark, majority decision. Efetober Apochi, interesting name. We got. So that was a win. Popoka, split decision over Jesus Arachiga. And I cannot figure out how to say this woman's name. Ginny Fuchs? Fuchs? Yeah, probably Fuchs. Beat the interim WBC 115 champ, Adelaida Ruiz. Next. And the most. In her fourth fight? That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a fast upswing. So. In the main event, we had Diego Pacheco versus Maciej Sulecki. It was KO in six. Did you guys watch this? I only watched the main event. Same. <laughs> uh, yeah, you weren't Still here. Still on vacation? Uh, now, actually, now it's back to 31st. I just didn't watch it. Must have Wait. been a good Saturday then. 31st? What day was that? Oh, Saturday. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where I was, actually. It's when boxing usually is. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> 
Diego Pacheco, K O six. Goodness gracious, a beauty of a left hook to the body. I do not fault Suleki one bit for not making the count. That was fucking rough. It hurt my body to see it. Yeah, Pacheco looked good. I I really like Diego Pacheco. Same. I'm I was surprised more than I was of his performance because I Pacheco I feel is already a, kind of a known quantity in the boxing world. Maybe not beyond that, but we have a pretty good idea. He's really solid, solid prospect. Mm-hmm getting himself into contention as he deserves. What surprised me more was Jose Benavides Sr. in his corner was fucking on point. I did not think of very highly of him as a trainer until they spent a lot of time in his corner with the camera. And just here, I, I don't know, I heard it raw. They, I, didn't, I don't know if they had a translation or anything, but it, it was really, he was really good with his instructions. Very surprising. Nice. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Well, now I think Diego Pacheco, he's ready for uh, Canelo, isn't he? That's a, no, no. That's the level that we're at these days with Canelo. Do you think Pacheco would beat Berlanga? I think yeah. he would. I think yeah, so. I think, yeah, I think yeah, probably. So. I don't. Berlanga is really not that good. He, yeah, yeah, he never was. Hmm. I'm trying to think if Mbili's a little too experienced. But they're not too far apart in fights. 22 for Pacheco and 28 for Mbili. I think Pacheco's ready to really have, like, a step up. Yeah, for a sure. serious step up. Not this, like, these half yeah. steps that they've been giving him. Demetrius Andre? Yeah, isn't he, like, retired? Uh, he's... Last fight was in November of 23, which was David Benavides. He's in his uh, mid-30s, late mid your layoff isn't that it's not ter- yeah it's not terrible who's this osley iglesias guy cuban guy fighting out of germany i uh, don't don't have them fight any unknown cubans they tend to be <laughs> spoilers yeah other than i don't know beck the bully pacheco would be beck the bully i think so too yeah but that, that might be a good step up fight i mean beck's considered borderline world level or title level i mean he's obviously world level uh patrick mccrory the irish guy last got stopped by berlingen six but was undefeated before that wouldn't be bad no no wouldn't be bad no, honestly good. i think pacheco could beat him Billy too but that he's would be a options. big step that's a big step up yeah other than like i, I don't know Canelo's kind of tying up the division, so it's kind of hard to say like what direction he goes if he wants to get into a title. It's a problem with these undisputed situations. When the yeah. when the champion doesn't, you know, fight the contenders, actual contenders. <laughs> like in a well, way. Well, where's the IBF belt going? I have not seen. Uh, like in a way, fights the fights, right? You put if that's who's the mandatory, or whatever. Then that's that's who. It, yeah. I- I know people bitch about him not fighting the best, but he really does. At the weight class he's at, Those he's the... not cherry picking. Who else do you want? <laughs> Sam Goodman. This is always my argument. And then they name somebody two weight classes higher than him. Sam Goodman, uh, MJ, I guess. I still think that's a good one to make. IBF is vacant still. It would just be fucking perfect if Ca- the IBF made Canelo Berlanga for the for the uh, vacant title that would, that would just be great <laughs> it would just make so much sense anything more on pacheco before we move on no all right no. in tokyo <laughs> from the bottom up here just because there were some good there's some good stuff on it uh toshiki shimomachi ud over ryuya sugawa those are 122s uh andy hiraoka this one was fucking great. Uh, stops Grandpa Barroso, Ismail Barroso, in nine. It's a 12-rounder at 140. Um, Andy looked pretty pretty solid. Really, Not Grandpa. Yeah. I'm really glad to see another... I always like seeing more people coming into the mix instead of just having the same, like, three fucking people at the top the whole time. Yeah, no, uh, Hiraoka is... 
is a solid prospect for sure. I would, if I had, looking at the, this is just box rec, so make of it what you will. He's at number three. Jose Ramirez is at six. I would like that one. Arnold Barbosa is at 10. Not bad. Uh, Sandor Martin. I don't think that's a very good matchup. I don't think so either. I don't know if that would go well for Andy. Even if he did win, he wouldn't look very good. Yeah. That's uh, Sandor Martin's problem is everybody's going to not look good. He's a even banana if they peel. Beat him. Is what yeah. I've heard him called. Brandon Lee. I would, that could be fun. I would like that a lot, actually. Yeah. I don't know who wins that one. Yeah, I, I would have to... Oh, man, I'd I, lean towards Brandon Lee, but I, definitely not a sure thing. I was going to say I lean more towards Andy, but also not at all certain. Not even close. That would be a fun fight. Um... Michelle Rivera has some name value there. Gary Antoine Russell needs to come back. Name value. Alberto yes. Cuello has an interim title. So that's a good way get to get into the mix. Uh, Jermaine Ortiz, another banana peel kind of guy. He's not... Yeah, no, now that you've said it, I want to see him versus Brandon Lee. Jermaine? Or, oh, uh, Andy? Andy, yeah. We have to take to social media and will this into existence. Uh, we need to make this happen. Put them on the undercard of the In a Way America card. Oh, that yes, actually, that's really good. Oh man, Jose Zapata, <laughs> Rolando Romero, yes, please. <laughs> uh, all right, that's enough. Andy, solid win. Um, Want to see younger opposition? Like, not saying Barroso's terrible but he definitely looked his age yeah and andy was very but much more athletic so it would be nice to see someone who has legs underneath him still and he'd be relatively marketable in america because he does speak english fairly well yes and being a uh, biracial would help it's a little bit more american a more american image or yeah palatable i suppose um, moving up, I don't know. I don't understand this person. I don't understand what the big deal about him is. Uh, Jin Sasaki stops uh, Camille Bala in the seventh. This was one forty-seven. Yeah, people are really, really excited about Jin Sasaki. I don't get it. What? Why? What? What's? I don't know. Ah. Uh, he, he's big for a Japanese guy. Like a, he's a welterweight. Uh. 833 Lux Pods, call or text, please. What the fuck is the deal with Sasaki? I really need to know. Because he did, I don't know, it was okay. It was an okay win. Bala is a personal trainer by day. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't have anything against Jin Sasaki. Same, but I, I don't either. I, I don't see the hype either. I, I think he's average. Yeah, I don't get it. All right, moving along. WBO bantamweight title Yoshiki Take retains his belt by UD over Daigo Higa I do not agree with this decision I do not either I was I do, so angry about this I do this. not agree with that at all it's not to say that Take was terrible or that he was the mop and Higa was the fucking janitor cleaning house with him it's not what it is because he was fine he did good he did well but Higa was better I don't I don't get what what is happening. Why does this keep happening? They gave him the Ioka treatment. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, that was predetermined, and you can't convince me otherwise. Yeah, because he's Okinawan. Higa, well, and Higa had the knockdown. I would say that he also won more than half the round. Yes, absolutely. And, but Takei has the best fucking chin I have ever seen. He took so much punishment and refused to fall down. It was crazy. I remember watching and we were everybody was pretty much talking about it. it was like god damn what defense what is that let's just clobber each other yeah that also possible fight of the year yes i wasn't convinced arguable. until about the like ninth round but probable fight of the year i'm trying to see Drip, where... if you missed this one you need to go find it and watch it i'll have to find the the recap the whole damn fight was highlights <laughs> like yeah. the highlight reel is an hour long. Oh. Uh, Higa's gotten the short end of the stick a few times, I think. 
this is another one of those not subtle we don't like you from the Japanese Boxing Commission. Has he tried being from mainland Japan? Has he tried being less brown? Yeah. Oh, like... well, damn. <laughs> damn. No, but Seriously. serious drip, that's all Seriously. it is. Seriously. It's look if you see look at him, he is an islander. He looks like he has islander like tan. Yeah. And they don't like that. It's also why Andy Hiraoka is twenty three and oh and where he is. They usually move Japanese prospects really fast, but his dad's from Ghana, so he's Blasian, and Blasian. they just don't promote him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's not not <laughs> famous, but he got fucked. He yeah. got fucked by the judges. R.I.P. In my opinion. I agree with you, 100%. Uh, main event in Tokyo. Goodness gracious. Uh, I say goodness gracious as uh, not great. Actually, because TJ Kohani bitched out in the middle of a round. You know, I punched him in the ribs so hard it dislocated his hip. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Oh, man. I don't know what the hell happened. It, so, in a way, undisputed super bantamweight champion. TJ's rankings from IBF and then WBA CO is 7682. All of those should be put a one. Or a two in front of them, because that was fucking garbage. Uh, survival mode from the beginning. Um, when he did finally start trying to exchange towards the end, yeah, he was clearly losing it every time he tried to exchange. And then Inoue hits him, and then he acts like his, like what? Yeah, his hip popped out or something. That was so stupid. I'm very upset with you, TJ. I stayed up to like six in the morning for that. Oh, uh, no. unacceptable. End of rent. Yeah, it was pretty anticlimactic. I kept but... trying to sit, like tell myself because of the, like how exciting T uh, Takei Higa was and how like how cool it was to see the Hiroka show out. That was kind of worth it. And yeah, it was. But the co-main was definitely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. The co-main was great. Man. Yeah, yeah. This one was upsetting and i will say in didn't look great in the first couple rounds and i rewatched it and i am convinced he's not very good against southpaws he, it takes him a while to figure out the feet he kept stepping on dohani and that too. like tripping over him and it was really throwing off in rhythm i think that's why the first two rounds were kind of shit to be honest is like he wanted to throw and then he'd step on his foot and he's like i gotta fix this uh, the battle of the toes. Yeah. I remember at one point he was kind of, it looked, I don't know if he was confused or something, but he was like pivoting his foot over in and out of Doheny's foot one time. I don't know why he was doing that. It was kind of weird. Uh, it looked like he could have done something when he had Doheny on the ropes like that. Topalos yeah, I think, is also I think in a way just isn't very good against Southpaws. Which makes me want to see the Nakatani fight more. It took him 10 to get Tapala's out. you know. For and it is. took him like 5 or 6 to really start yeah. to try and get Tapala's out. Like, he w he started slow against Tapala's as well. Yeah, I remember that. I did, I think Inoue is not very good against Southpaws. And to that be fair, be I haven't downfall. seen very... Yeah, I haven't seen very many Southpaws in the Japanese fights. It, it's pretty uncommon here. Is it like a situation where they train to be orthodox regardless of what their actual dominant hand is because like cuba yeah, does that they train them to be southpaw yeah i don't know um well and there's lots of people that switch to southpaw like de La Hoya did too didn't he or the other way around might have i don't know de La Hoya switched from his his dominant hand but i can't remember which way he was uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know if they do it on purpose or if it's just one of those things where they train a certain way and that way is designed around being right-handed, like all the drills and stuff. Right. It might be hard for the coaches to switch. But I wonder if it's been hard for Inoue to get Southpaw sparring partners. I expect it would be. As far as I know, he doesn't really fly anyone in. I haven't noticed on socials him flying people in for, for sparring. Yeah, I I haven't either. Like, what, one of the big things le leading into the Fulton fight was like he's never he's never faced the black fighter one just it, at all, 
and then yeah. someone that has that slick American style like he does, like Fulton had. You've never seen that kind yeah. of thing in sparring. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I've just never seen him bring anyone in for sparring, and I stalk his socials pretty hard. <laughs> so. Well, with that fucking disappointment, do you have any more ranting you want to do on it? I want a New Year's boxing event ticket so fucking bad, and I am 100% sure I will never be able to get one here. <clears throat> That's the end of the rant. Because he's supposed to fight on New Year's Eve next. Right. Wait, why can't you get it? Lottery system. It'll be a lottery system. Oh, it's a lottery. Oh, right, right, right. And maybe I'm just bitter, but I am 100% sure because I don't have a kanji name that they just throw me out before they actually draw. What if you have someone put in for you? Oh, that wouldn't work either. I, no, well, no one's ever actually checked my ID or anything, but it does say that the name on the ticket has to match your ID. Oh. I've always seen tickets say that. Yeah. It would just be my luck that I pay $500 for a New Year's Eve ticket and then, you know. The one time they're I checking get to IDs. The door. Uh, honestly? Yeah. Fuck it. Worth the gamble. Maybe. All right. Anything more for, in a way? No. You? All right. Marv Nation, Friday, September 6th. Fucking Jose Cepeda. Still fighting. Even though he won, still, it's like, man, I've been red catch at this point. It's a fucking clown show. Everybody knows it flops around more than a fish out of water it's fucking ridiculous stops him into um this was at welterweight and yeah they, he didn't look great didn't look like his usual self anyway yeah i don't know if you want to check out the other fights i don't i don't know what to tell you about them i could tell you the results but they were all bad excellent i did watch the whole card but n absolutely nothing worth tuning in for moving on september 7th in australia Green Machine Promotions. So uh, that's Green Machine. that's the nickname of one of their one of the Austra an Australian boxer's last name is Green, I think, and that's where he gets it from. I don't know who. Like, I'm guessing it's just the main event was the point. Was the yeah yeah okay. So I I put this one on the outline. The rest of it was pretty crap, to be honest. The main event was knockout CP Freshmart absolutely schooling some young Australian kid. I'm surprised the kid made the the final bell. He was taking an ass kicking after about the sixth round. But Ruby on Discord was really pushing this one, so I tuned in. Well, yeah, she is Australian, so makes sense. Yeah. Well, and she was very excited about this Alex Winwood. <laughs> um, that work out for you. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of sad. It, so he was the fastest Australian to get a world title shot. This was only his fifth fight. And all that considered, he didn't look terrible. But uh, CP Freshmart just... Oh. What's his real name? Uh, Neom Trong looked like a grown man beating up a high school kid. Even though they're both tiny. It just... <laughs> Tamanun Neom Trong. Fun. Yeah. He has been a world champion for eight years. I think he's the longest reigning champion right now. Uh, CP and... Freshmart has definitely, he's been a titleist since I started watching. That was a long time Yeah, ago. I'm pretty sure they say he won this belt in 2016, they said. Pretty sure. And uh, he he looked really good. Like, he didn't look old or anything. And he is getting pretty old for minimum weight. Yes, yeah, 33. Interesting. Yeah, which for what is minimum weight? 105. 8 pounds? 105? Yep. That's pretty old for 105. And he still looked really good. I was I was impressed. I tuned in because I wanted to see Neom Trong. I, I kind of like him. So the only other titleist I know is... Uh... Oscar Coyazo, the yeah, he's also Oscar very guy. fun to watch. <laughs> All right, well, time to get a unification fight going there. Actually, and fun side note, according to the Australian commentators, this is the first time that Neom Trong fought outside of Thailand, which I find hard to believe. It's not, not true. Twenty eighteen, he fought in China. Other than that, ah. he's only fought. So they're just being first time in six years for whatever that counts. Anyways, I would like to see a unification. He still looks really good. Nobody cares about the straw weights. Yeah, uh, this is... Except me. Moving on to previews here. Quickly in Dublin at the 3 Arena, 360 promotions. Just the top two. Callum Walsh, who is... I don't remember what title this is for, or what sanctioning body for it's for. But anyway, verse 
Oh, shit. Runowski. I didn't look into how to pronounce it. Um, His first name, anyway. Perzmislaw? Perzmislaw? Must. <laughs> no clue. Polish, right? Yeah, very Polish. Very Polish. Yeah. Very right, Polish. Oh, this is for, like, so, what's funny is this is, like, a continental Americas fight with an Irish fighter and a Polish fighter in Ireland. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think it's WBA. Anyway. And uh, co-main, Ali Akhmadov versus Pierre Hubert de Bombay. Um, de Bombay. Hubert. De Bombay. What a, what a name. All right. Friday, September 20th in Phoenix, Arizona. I will definitely be trying to go to this. Jaime Munguia versus Eric Bazinian. That's the, it's a super middleweight fight. I haven't been able to find what else is on it. <laughs> that's not very far away yeah, i know yeah, right? i know that's what's weirding me out is that i don't know what else is on it um it's just Jaime and him that's it uh that would be fine with me top rank <laughs> is the main promoter of this despite mungia being golden boy and bazinian being some other promoter i don't know uh i don't know weird yeah I, i'm not sure what to make of this because i don't really know much about bazinian i mean Jaime should win it right i expect that's the point Oh. I've seen Bazinian before, but I don't remember him, so he can't be very... I've seen his name. Special. That's it. He's from Armenia. But there you go. That's the top rank card. That's the headline, at least. We'll see what else is there. <laughs> we'll see if I'll be reporting live on the ground. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. All right, so before moving on, I wanted to make sure that I got all the information in now that I have it available to me. So from the bottom up, Art Barrera uh, Jr., 6-0 and versus 3-5-2 and Frank Brown. These are six-round welterweights. Uh, Steven Navarro, 3-0 and versus Oscar Arroyo, 3-2. and Six-round superflies. Uh, Sebastian Hernandez versus uh, Yonfres Parejo. Sebastian is 16-0 and and Yonfres is 24-6-1. and Eight-round 122s. Moving up. Jorge Garcia versus Ilias Esaudi. 10 round super welterweight. Uh, Garcia is 30 and 4. Ilias is 22 and 2. Moving up, it's uh, Demler Zamora, goes by DJ. It's 13 and 0 versus uh, Gerardo Antonio Perez. 12, 5 and 1. 8 round lightweights. Alan Garcia versus Ricardo Fernandez. 8 round lightweights. Alan is 14 and 0. Ricardo is 15 and 13. Not great. And then the end of the ESPN Plus portion, Charlie Suarez, 17 and overs, uh, Jorge Castaneda, 17 and 3, 10 round super featherweights. And then moving into the televised segment, it's going to start with Emiliano Vargas, 11 and 0 versus Larry Friars, 13, 6 and 1, 8 round super lightweights. And then the co main, Richard Torres versus Joey Dewejko. He is 28, 11 and 4. Yikes. So eight round heavyweights. Uh, Richard Torres is 10 and 0 coming into this. So those are all the fights that to the best I can see or the best I can find that is the running order from the bottom up. But some of those things might shift around uh, by the time the fight comes around. So let's get back to it. Saturday, September 21st. Oh, th this is the stuff dreams are made of. Oh, no, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. From the bottom up at Wembley Stadium in London, Mark Chamberlain versus uh, Josh Padley. That's at 135. I was not able to find how many rounds it's going to be. I'm going to assume it's 10 or 12, but still. Joshua Buazzi, uh rated first in the WBO versus Willie Hutchinson, rated second. This is for the interim light heavyweight title. Uh, Anthony Capacci. That should be a fun fight. It should be. Um, Hutchinson comes to comes to fight. Um, Buazzi also. He's not very good, but still. Shows up. Yeah, he shows up. Kakachi the IBF super featherweight champion versus Josh Warrington. Oh, the Fuck, Akashi, Kakachi. Kakachi, please do us all a solid here. Nick, your, your sport, uh, this planet is calling you to service. Please help <laughs> us. You've been called to a duty. <laughs> yes, you've been called to duty. Yeah. We need you. <clears throat> what's the what's the payout on a Josh Warrington headbutt cut? Oh. A prop bet. Retire early. You probably retire early. No, you wouldn't win anything. Josh Warrington and headbutts. <laughs> Name a more uh, iconic actually, duo. I'll wait. 
It's like peanut butter and jelly. Yep. Yeah. Oh fuck! I hope Kakati just like shuts his lights off. I, I don't think, I think he. he will, I think. But... I think he will. I think Patchy's Patchy's pretty good. He's all right, and Warrington's moving up, so. Warrington's pretty shit. <clears throat> yeah, it hasn't stopped anyone before. Um, moving up, Tyler Denny versus Hamza Shiraz for the EBU middleweight title. Um, EBU. It's a subdivision of the WBC. So Tyler Denny ranked tenth, Shiraz first in the division. So fun. I'm excited for Hamza to show out. He was one of my new people of the mid year. Just because if you've been paying attention to British boxing, you already know who he is. I didn't. So there you go. Uh, okay, moving up to the co main. Liam Smith versus Josh Kelly. <laughs> Josh finally I didn't doing Liam something. Liam Smith was still fighting. Yeah. For some reason, I thought he retired. You, could, I could say the same thing about Josh Kelly. I didn't know he was still fighting because he's not fucking doing anything. He's mm -hmm. just kind of <laughs> floundering in the UK. He's there. Yeah. Doing what? What are you doing with your time, buddy? <laughs> So I kind of right. hope Liam Smith wins it. I like Liam Smith. He's the gray-haired one, yeah, right? He's the silver yeah. fox. They call him uh, what's his name? Mundo. Beefy. No, beefy. 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 Yeah. Crazy yeah. name. But... Beefy and Mundo are awful names. <laughs> I don't know why. I, yeah, I do like Mundo more than Beefy, honestly. Anything more? I don't know what else to say about these two. It's like what? Like what the fuck are you guys doing with your? Like what? Why are you still doing this if you're not making oh, an active push for something? I hope Liam Smith wins. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I don't really like Josh Kelly. He's kind of shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I keep I keep up with him like just on paper. Like I follow all of his fights, always have them in the outline to talk about, even if it's just mentioning in passing. And it's, I don't know, it's never very impressive. <laughs> all right, main event time. IBF interim champion, Daniel Dubois fights Daniel dubious versus Anthony Joshua ranked third if you know the IBF like I do that is as close to a mandatory shot as you're gonna get if you don't grease the right wheels so I think Joshua should win this fairly easily fairly easily yes I agree I'm so tired of Frank Warren trying to push Daniel Dubois like this next best thing I mean, he's not terrible. He's not just, terrible. He's not, he's not. He's not terrible. But what Frank Warren's trying to do, just like make him out to be the next, like best, like the next best AJ or something. It's like, dude, chill. Like, he's okay. He's not great. Yeah, I mean, it's he's better than Anderson. He's better than a lot of the like Euro level guys, but not quite at the world level. He, well, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of people at heavyweight. He's definitely. At the world level, he's just not in the top I don't, three. I don't think he's like elite level. Is. No, I think, I mean, other than the the top five, who doesn't he beat? Let's find out. Uh, okay, I think him, I think him and Bacoli be a pretty good fight, honestly. I think Bacoli fucking murders Dubois. Yeah, no, Bacoli's not in the top pretty. five. It won't be pretty. Nah, Dubois can't take a shot for shit. Bukoli would just beat a shot of him. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm overrating Dubois a little. But Usyk? I, like it. I don't think Dubois is bad at all, mm -hmm. but I think Frank Warner's trying to make him out to be where he's not. And it's like a, like a superstar like AJ. Some frightening That's heavy hitter. Frank's job, though. It no, is it really is for sure. sure. But It is for sure. But it's like, we know that he's not. Like, Frank, just stop the act, bro. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Like, if, if Dubois I'm... was undefeated, okay, we could definitely still bite that image a little bit. But, bro, we've seen Dubois. Like, we see him lose, too. That's, that's not... Stop. <laughs> yeah, fair. Box rec. I won't disagree with any of that. Yeah, Box rec top five. Usyk at first, Joshua at second, Tyson Fury at third, Ajit Kabayel at four, and Dubois at five. Actually, Kabayel and Dubois would be a really good fight. That would be that would be, that would be one I really want to see. I don't rate Dubois' chances very well, but they're no. better than they would be against Bacoli, I think, anyway. Yeah, wow. Kuwait and uh, um, Dubois be really good fight. Uh, six is Bacoli. Seven, Joseph Parker. Eight, Jang. Nine, Michael Hunter. Ten, Frank Sanchez. Eleven, Dillian Wright. Uh, Parker beats Dubois, too. 
<laughs> Otto Wallin, F H. I think Sanchez, Sanchez and Duval be a good fight too. Right. Uh, actually, no, Sanchez. Uh, it depends. Sanchez looked like shit last time. Mm-hmm. They he they said he had like a bum knee or something, and he's also like fucking yeah, forty five. So Sanchez. <laughs> yeah, he's a Cuban. He's like thirty two. Cuban thirty two. What the fuck? Oh. So he's yeah, yeah he's Sanchez like forty. Like, okay, he's like forty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Justice you know, Huni at 15. That's not bad, actually, for Dubois. So, back to the fight, though. Yes. How do we think it goes? How do we think that goes? I give four to six, and AJ stops uh, him. Yeah, about the same. Yeah. I don't know if it's that fast. Uh, it depends how aggressive AJ comes in, I guess. And it, AJ has been looking more aggressive lately. Yeah, maybe you're not wrong. Du, uh, Dubois has confidence problems. Like, if he gets clocked or something doesn't go his way, he, like, crumbles. Yeah. yeah I mean, he, he almost lost to uh, Miller. Oh, Not Gerald Miller. Miller, yeah. He almost lost that fight. Like, And I remember after the Miller win that Miller, in addition to others, other, like, heavyweight fighters that were on that knockout chaos or whatever the fuck it was. Um, knockout chaos or, like, the night of heavyweights. Yeah. Anyway, whatever the card was in Saudi Arabia... But like all the all the other fighters came, were like trying to like gas him up, telling him like, "Look, you can do it. See, you're a big boy. You can do it." <laughs> That's what I think is happening. Yeah. Anyway. No, I agree. I think he has conflict issues. Yeah. Also, what the fuck was that promotion video you sent? Greg? Oh, what the hell was that? Uh, yeah, dude. I, I I don't know what's been going on, but like, why is every like, I'm, I guess Saudi, this would be a Saudi card, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Riyadh season. Why yeah. is? Yeah, why is every Riyadh season like a horror like theme? It was the same well, thing for. It made a... sense. It was in October. The five v five was kind of. I like that. That one. Yeah, that was a heist movie though. Yes. Yeah, that wasn't horror. This one, they're all like dead, and come back to there life. Was, there was a horror one for uh, it was Adrian Agandu too. I think it was a horror one too. Yeah, but I think it was around Halloween, wasn't it? I don't remember, but I, yeah, I mean, either way, like in general, like these trailers are getting a little, like a little wonky. AJ and Gunn was They're in March. Of way this over year. the top. Is that the one that was the zombie movie? I think so. I think that was it. Um, let me. It's weird. Yeah, no, like they called that knockout chaos, but then yeah, they I had zombies. I remember Beevil yeah. was in that zombie one. Yes. Yes. It, so it was that one. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Like in my head, I moved that to October because it was zombies. But yeah, no, they don't make any sense. Yeah, like this one is them, like I guess undead or something, or zombies again, singing what "Sweet Caroline." Yes, that's the what... "Sweet Caroline" makes sense. That, I thought yeah. that was pretty funny. Yeah, that part I get. Um, and also, being a Riyadh season card, it's gonna be like a twelve-hour card, probably super long maybe they long have intermission. oasis playing as the act for this uh, i hope so oasis announced a tour and instantly sold out and people who waited in line couldn't get tickets yeah and they had to start like two extra days or something they took everybody's email addresses so they could email them a first chance that had stood in line overnight and didn't get tickets it was crazy it, yeah i heard about it as well uh, 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 uh that's it for this block oh, let me get my fucking dilio here unless there's more on uh zombie um, aj and undead nah. dubois i got nothing no nah, i just thought the trailer was weird and should be made fun of for the fury and ganu one was pretty cool like they were pounding on stuff and it would sh rock the other guy who would in turn yeah. start training and pound something and then it would rock the other dude and they went back yeah and that forth. was cool yeah. that one was cool yeah but thanks for listening to this episode of the boxing b-sides if there's something that you'd like to hear more about or you just have to let me know how much of a casual you think i am you can text our anonymous line at 833-589-7637 if you think you're entertaining you think you can be funny Call and leave a voice message, and we'll see if you make the final cut of the show. 833-LUX-PODS. Can't go wrong. If you prefer to hit us up on social media, the account name is LVX Media Net. That's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky, and all the rest of that shit. If you can't find us, chances are because we're not on it. 
There's a lot of stuff that gets cut from the final releases, like the one you just heard, and it happens for all different kinds of reasons. If you want the raw audio from our lips straight to your ears, look us up on Patreon, LVX Media Net, just like everywhere else. Intro and outro tracks by Middle of Nowhere Beats. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lvxmedia.net. Fucking scissors, because we cut shit in there. Mm. Nice. All right, as we head into AJ Dubois weekend, parting words. Still pushing for that bakery. <laughs> <laughs> for sandwiches at any time of the day. Yup. A grilled cheese with a croissant on it. That that sounds pretty fucking dope. See? Man. <clears throat> things should happen. Things can be done with this. Um, I don't know what I have for parting words this time. Try a different type of food <laughs> sometime this week. Something you haven't had before. Fair enough. That's always a I good thing. I can do one. that. Yeah, that's always a good thing. Let's get the hell out of here. We will be back. Alrighty. We'll be back soon. We'll see you guys next time on the other side of AJ versus Dubois. Thank you.